All right, good morning and welcome to our presentation on a hopeful Holy Land pilgrimage. I am the Reverend David Erickson here at St. Mary's, and I've got to nuance this volume because right now it's, it's going into the red. So give me half a second. For those of you at home, I thank you for your patience. And where is that done? Oh, I don't know. This is, oh, this is a different one. So I see, I'm going to turn you down a little bit. There we go. That'll work. All right. So uh, just so everyone's aware, this is a picture of me in the Holy Land <laughs> with my dear friend, Doit Khan, who is currently the rector of Church of the Epiphany in Seattle. Yes, you can get yourself a little camel ride. Uh, and as you see, we are outside of the old wall of Jerusalem. And here is, uh, behind the tree is... Um, I forget what that big mosque is, but that is where the Temple Mount used to be. So, um, pardon me, I'm about to sneeze. <coughs> Which one is you? What's yeah, that? Which one is you? This right is me there. right here. Yeah. So, as I've mentioned, we are planning on a hopeful Holy Land pilgrimage as St. Mary's parishioners and friends on April 21st through May 2nd, 2025. So, let's ask the first big question. Why? Why go to the Holy Land? It's not demanded in our religion like uh, a trip to Mecca is in Islam. Uh, and yet, from my experience when I went in, in the mid-2000s, is that on a very early fundamental level, is that while I've read scripture and read these places and known these stories so intimately, it was almost once I realized seeing these spaces and places where it happened that I had a two-dimensional experience of it beforehand, and being present to the spaces made it three-dimensional, made it tangible, made it visceral. Um, not to all, also to mention the fact that um, one of the most ancient Christian practices we have is the act of pilgrimage. We actually know the most about the earliest Christian worship, specifically uh, the Easter Vigil, because of a woman who went on pilgrimage to Jerusalem and took very, very detailed notes about the worship she saw there. I forget the name, so I'll get that for you. Some you learn in seminary and then forget. Um, so it is a, this, isn't, this is not a vacation, if you will. This is a spiritual discipline and a practice to engage our life of faith uh, by engaging the land and the places where the stories come from. And this is not just the Christian story, but again, this is the Jewish story. And we'll get aspects of the Muslim story. It's also helpful to know that you know, this is a complicated relationship of those three major faiths. Uh, it has been for millennia. And one of the nice things we'll talk about in just a second is we will get exposure to those different views of thinking and thought uh, in some of our evening programming. And I, I, I remember that the talk I had, both from first the Palestinian perspective and then the Israeli perspective about the Middle East, made me, and at my pilgrimage 20 years ago, made me realize just how complicated, confusing, intertwined, and, and, and longstanding the issues are. And it's really helpful because it, it takes it away from good versus bad. All right, so I thought, what does this place look like? Let me share some pictures of you with you. These are not my pilgrimage, unfortunately, but these are some pilgrimages that Doit Khan, my friend, again, has been taking communities, uh, groups from his church every year for over 20 years. Uh, it is a spiritual discipline that he learned from All Saints Beverly Hills and where I learned it as well. And so I'm glad that I can now bring it to our community also. So this is uh, the Sea of Galilee. We will take a lovely little boat ride there as part of it. Uh, and this is the Sea of Galilee as well. Again, these pictures will be on the website uh, on part of the, the pilgrimage wedge page. So you'll get to see them a little better. But the water is here. The land is there. Uh, that's Jordan, I believe. Oh, no, no, that's wrong. That's still Israel. Anyway, so that is some of the things we're going to see. This is a shepherd's cave in the shepherd's field near uh, Bethlehem. This on the other side is up near Nazareth. They believe this is where... Uh, Mary's home was. This is the Church of the Annunciation. And what's amazing is this is a huge, huge Catholic church. And this hole down here looks down into a much more ancient church that they believe was built on Mary's home. So you get these beautiful levels of history because as history goes on, land actually gets, gets higher. So we know that when we do go and we go to this one touristy upper room experience, we know that it's not actually the upper room because we actually have to climb stairs to go to it. The actual upper, upper room, because of wars and, and all this stuff, is probably 10 to 15 feet below us currently. Interesting thing that we learned. Uh, this is the pilgrimage doing the, the walk of Jesus uh, through the streets of Jerusalem. 
This here is uh, a group of pilgrims standing on some of the walls that separate Palestine from uh, Israeli territory. This is, um, I'm sorry, I'm hungry. What's the name of that mosque? Dome of the Rock. That's Dome of the Rock. al Aqsa is the other one. al Aqsa is over here. You can't see it. Oh. Maybe that's al Aqsa. I can't tell. Oh. Um, this is the Dome of the Rock, uh, where they, the, this is sort of the spot where they believe the, um, the old Jerusalem temple is. And this is the Western Wall, which has been known before as the Wailing Wall. Uh, and what this actually was, this wall right here is actually support structure for the field that this is on. So, so here, like this dot, if we were able to climb this wall and go right there, then that's where we would see that. So these two are connected. And now we have inside the Church of the Holy Sepulcher. The Church of the Holy Sepulcher is this gigantic church that includes, encompasses inside of it, all the last acts of Jesus, where he was crucified, where he was buried. Uh, and this is the sanctuary within the sanctuary, the church within the church, that they believe is the, the tomb, the spot where Jesus resurrected from. The great thing about this church is, is that it was built centuries ago, maybe a millennia, and it, it's been destroyed many times and then rebuilt. But every time they've rebuilt it, they've used as much as they could of the destroyed structure. So there's fascinating architecture here. Uh, as you look through it about what has been you know, repurposed. All right. So that's just a, a handful of the pictures. Okay, so itinerary. This is, we'll go through this fairly quickly, but I just want to get you a sense. And all again, all this materials will be on the website. We are going with Kumri Pilgrimages, the same company that I went with 20 years ago. Um, it'll be read by, led by myself along with Canon Iyad Kumri. Iyad is, an, is a cousin, as he will say, he's a cousin of mine. Uh, he calls everybody cousins. He led my trip years ago, and his son Rami and Sammy are, are run the company with him. We will stay in... Uh, two locations, but one of them twice. St. George's Guest House is an Anglican uh, retreat center in the, the Palestinian quarter of Jerusalem. It's the place I stayed uh, back there. Um, it is very connected to the Anglican church there. Uh, in fact, sorry, Iyad is a canon of the Episcopal church. Uh, I know that he's a canon at least the Diocese of Los Angeles, if not others. Uh, and then the place we will stay up in Galilee, uh, near the Sea of Galilee, is uh, the Sisters of Nazareth. Uh, this is, um, you know, like, like it's like it's not monastic living, but it's 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 clean, it's beautiful, it's pretty, but it's not fancy. Uh, but they're wonderful places to stay. So what we will do is we'll rely, we're, we will depart Monday, April twenty first. On the twenty second, we will arrive in Jerusalem, and we will be traveled uh, transported about an hour forty five minutes to Jerusalem. We will have a dinner and overnight at St George's Guest House. We'll be very tired and uh, disoriented. Um, but it'll be lovely. Uh, that Wednesday, we will see Horizons of Jerusalem and Herodium, Mount Scopus, View of the Judean Desert, Mount of Olives, City of David. Um, and so this is where we're going to get some of just sort of the breathtaking views that is the, um, the geography of the Holy Land. Thursday, we'll do some of the old city and the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. So we'll get to experience that, although what I will encourage you is that once we get the formal uh, invitation to it, or exploration of it, we do have free time on many days in Jerusalem. Uh, and I went back several times because of just how wonderful this space is. Uh, Friday, we'll go to Shepherd's Field, Bethlehem. Um, and then we'll see the, the, the oldest church in Christendom. Oops, wrong button. Uh, which is uh, over the place where they believe that Jesus was born. Uh, there's a, actually, I should have found a picture from them. Uh, anyway, um, it's really wonderful. Oh, I, should, I, backed, I should say, on Thursday night, we have a lecture on Islam. Uh, Friday, we have an evening lecture on the Palestinian perspective. Uh, we go to Jericho and Nazareth. Uh, and there's all these. So I would say there's, again, this is going to be on the website, so you can read all this document in great detail. We'll do Christ Church and Sephora. So this is stuff around um, uh, Galilee. And this is as well, uh, like the, the, the fish of the, the place of the loaves and fishes. We'll do the boat ride on the Sea of Galilee. We'll visit Capernaum, which was Peter's home. Um, I'm sure I'm still recording. Good, I am. Um, and we're, we're still, we're up in Galilee at this time. Uh, Burkin, Nablus, Tabla. This is more uh, stuff with the, within Romans uh, stuff, with Jesus' stuff. Stuff. I'm so not formal right now. <laughs> Wednesday the 30th, we'll do the Dome of the Rock, the Western Wall, or, or, or yeah, the Western Wall, the Israeli Museum. Uh, and so that's where we'll see uh, 
both the western wall and the, the, the space above it where the temple was. Uh, Thursday is Bethphage, Dominus Lebuch, Gethsemane. So we'll do some exploration of the, of the valley between Jerusalem and, and, uh, and Gethsemane, and we'll, we'll, we'll go to the place where the Lord wept. And all of this is like, you think it's so far away from American terms, it's within walking distance of each other. That's the thing I think that blew my mind. And then on May 12th, May 2nd, there, day 12, we will walk the way of the cross, uh, and then we will wind up heading back to our return flight to, um, to San Francisco. So again, this will be on the website. Once you register, Max can send it to you uh, as a document so you can look as well. That's just a very quick gist of it. Who are our leaders? So this is our, our, our soon-to-be cousin, Iyad Kumri, and his son, Sammy, and his son, Rami. Uh, I guess they were, must have been super tiny when I was there 20 years ago. Uh, so I thought it'd be helpful for you to see, I found a couple more pictures. So this is Iyad with the Reverend Mary Glasspool. This is the, the bishop who ordained me a deacon and a priest. She was connected to the Diocese of Los Angeles back then, so I thought that was a fun picture. And then this picture, uh, Iyad again, this is St. George's Cathedral and College. This is where we'll stay in Jerusalem. I don't know who this guy is, but these two fellas, Rip Hardaway and Scott Brown, I used to be summer camp counselors with back in Texas 30 years ago, and they are both priests now. So uh, you know, these are all from, um, Oh, that's Suhail Dewani. Sorry, he used to be the Archbishop of, of um, Jerusalem, I think. Um, these are all from the, the website. So this is a, not just a reputable company, but a longstanding company, and a company that most Episcopal churches partner with to go to, uh, to the Holy Land. All right, the details, the facts. The total land cost is $3,350. All right? And that includes... Accommodation on an FB basis. I don't know what FB means, but it, 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 does anybody? I should have looked it up. I'll find out. But it, it includes everything except your play money. Accommodations, transportation, guiding fee, all entrances, all guest speakers, portage, tips for restaurant and hotel staff, bus driver tips. Um, the only thing that is, that, um, is not listed here, because this comes from Iyad's um, website, but we've included in the price, is the tip for Iyad himself. So that's, that's, so that's even included in this as well. Excluded from price is personal expenses, phone calls, drinks, laundry, uh, and the medical insurance and the travel insurance that we'll talk about. Um, we're going to talk about it, but airfare is separate, and we will um, discuss airfare when we come to the fall when I'm back from sabbatical. This price is based on double occupancy rooms, two people per room, so we are going to encourage you to, to find a friend, bring a friend or find a friend to stay with. Max will be a uh, once we get a full registration, we'll do some uh, partnering together if you um, um, desire. Actually, one thing I forgot to add, put in the literature max is if somebody does have a preference for a roommate, uh, to tell you that. So you can ask that. There are two single rooms that are available. They are an additional $600, and they're first come, first serve. So if you want a single room, get your uh, deposit in quickly and express it. Uh, and it, when we get to the end of it, there may be more. Again, this all just depends on numbers because of limited space. So if you're interested in a single room and there's not one available, let Max know. But they're not a lot, so uh, I'll tell you that. And hey, it's you know, fun having a roomie for a while. Um, great. Do I need to go? Yes, okay. Well, let me say this and I'll go to the next slide. So let's <laughs> talk about the deposit and the money. I'm going to go to the slide and I'm going to say a couple things. So the deposit, which is $750, that holds your space. It's paid to St. Mary's and held at St. Mary's. It is not going to Kumri pilgrimages yet. Uh, some of this is, is the language that comes from the uh, Kumri website, and I'm going to explain to it. Because of the circumstances of the world, that $2,000 deposit was, was waived. We didn't have to put it down as a church to hold the space. So we're not on the hook right now with any money. After this, the 750 person deposit is non-refundable once it's paid three months before the pilgrimage arrival. So our date for that due date, if you want to register, is a week before that. So January 14th, 2025. That's when we need to know if you're serious about going, and we will, and we will need your deposit by then. Um, and we'll talk about some uh, insurance and stuff. But like <laughs> after that, they say there's no refund and, and the, the remainder, 2600 
is due one month before, so it's March 14th. Now, they're very big on us getting travel and medical insurance. I would say check your current medical insurance policy and see if they'll cover international travel. If they do, I don't think you need additional, but you might want to see what this, what's, what's covered. And Max is going to do some research about travel insurance. I think it'll be very wise for us to look at how we get that vest for our cost for flights and for the pilgrimage itself. However, I, oh, I do have another slide I'll come to in a second, but I'll say it now. Um, if for any reason after we pay the full amount that Kumri Pilgrimages has to cancel the pilgrimage, they refund everything except the 750, uh, which is why the travel insurance would be good uh, if we have to cancel as an individual or if we have to cancel as a group. But it, it could be such that if world circumstances are such that it just doesn't happen because of world, world circumstances, you'd need travel insurance to cover the airfare and just a portion of the pilgrimage cost. We can take a maximum of 45 people. Well, that's a lot. They really encourage 30 to, 35 to 40. We need at least 22 for us to go. Um, oh, look, look at that. I've got all this right here. Well, that's good. I'm, not, I'm glad I know how to do this. Um, your passport, very important, must be at least six months old. So if you are considering going on this trip and you do not have an active passport or some, talk to somebody else who does, has, get them get their passport now. Because it's less than six months old, you will not be able to travel like in or maybe even through the areas. So 70 or 50 deposit, fully refundable until 114. Final deposit of 2600, due 314. Fully refundable if canceled by Kumri pilgrimages. Non-refundable if you individual or we uh, group cancel. So, but at that point, if you've got comprehensive travel insurance for it, then it's refundable. Double occupancy, single office 600. So the airfare, again, it's too far out to, just, to figure this out, but a coach seat right now, looking out several months to Israel, uh, is somewhere between 1100 and $1,500. You have the option. Um, what we're gonna do is in the fall, we'll see who's registered, we'll see what the world circumstances are, and we'll start talking about fl plane trips. If somebody wants to volunteer to sort of shepherd a group ticket process so we could fly together, great. I, that's what happened when I went. But also, you may want to uh, have different travel accommodations. You also may want to extend your trip a little bit before or after. And in that case, you, you, it was best for you to do it on your own. Uh, follow, but you'll just need to be in Jerusalem when, you know, Kumri Pilgrimage says. Um, they don't do that kind of travel, but I bet you Iyad has people he knows who can recommend for that travel. Um, yeah, so we'll figure that out uh, in the fall. Let me see, where are we at? Oh, oh okay. Okay. Um, okay, yeah. So we, what we will also do in the fall is once we have a group that's been registered, I want to begin building uh, camaraderie and relationships and community um, before we go. So we will have some uh, semi-regular events as pilgrims in the, in the fall and spring. These are not mandatory, but they're highly encouraged. We want to get to know each other a little bit. And my guess is still I'll invite us to uh, um, read a book or something about certain things of, of, of the Holy Land as well. So this is just a way for us to, um, to come together before we actually go. It helps the process. All right. How to register. Max Kirby, come up here for one second so those at home can see your, your beautiful, shiny face and maybe even hear that delicious English accent. <laughs> so this is Max Kirby. He has agreed to come into the camera. Come into the camera. There we go. This is Max Kirby. He's agreed to be our pilgrimage sort of coordinator. Uh, and so he is staffing the pilgrimage at smbsf.org website, or uh, uh, webpage and the web email. Uh, he, Whatever information um, you may want, Max will be able to get to you. Max, say hi to the folks. Fly to the folks. Perfect. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> so please, if you, if you have questions or want to register, email Max at pilgrimage at snbsf.org. Let him know your intention. He'll record your interest. And he'll send you uh, this information, but this will also be on the website. You'll also get a, a, a frequently asked questions sheet and a travel tips sheet. However, then the next act you need to do is to send or deliver a $750 deposit check to St. Mary's. Ashley Ryan, um, can well, go shut that door if you can. Thank you. Um, and add Holy Land Pilgrimage 
in the memo line. This will uh, let Ashley know that it is a uh, deposit for the pilgrimage, and Ashley and Max will coordinate so that those lists are correct with each other. Um, and again, if you have any questions, email Max. And I think that is the short and sweet of it. So I'm going to take your questions, but I'm not going to do it on the camera because I want this to be as short as I can for those who are... Oh, and actually, here's the thing. So I'm going to ask questions out of those who are here. If you want to continue watching, please do so and hear them. But if you have other questions or just want to pause now, email Max and come join us on Pilgrimage. All right. That was quick. But I'm, again, this is an amazing experience in my life. Uh, and I really want us to experience this as well on an ongoing basis even. But I'd love for you to consider joining us this trip. So what questions do you have for me or Max now? Rob. Yeah, you had indicated most of these places are very close in, in proximity to each other. Yep. So just just because I have I have neuropathy. Oh, feet, okay? so, great so question. I just wanted to think about the whole. Yes, thing. actually. So th it is highly encouraged that you are able to do a 20 minute walk. So there will be walking while things are close. We do do a lot of walking. And so yeah. the suggestion is that you be able to have a, a, a continuous walk over, it's not super hard terrain, but there will be steps at times, but you, the ability to walk for 20 minutes uh, is necessary. Okay. Good, good, great question, Rob. Yeah, I think if I... Okay. Come up here if you're gonna talk though, please. <laughs> I, I promise I didn't do this in, with this in mind, but about 20 years ago, I went to Jerusalem with my, uh, with, um, my grandmother. And you know, Jerusalem is, A, not flat. Okay, we're from San Francisco, but it is also not entirely you know, uh, wheelchair-friendly or you know, yeah, curves and whatnot. Not, not so, yeah, it's, it's worth, uh, worth thinking about that. And um, I guess we can try uh yeah i think i just it's just worth it yeah mind. it just yeah it's 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 not difficult terrain but it is not flat terrain yeah other uh, yes is there a general uh reading list that is provided about i know you mentioned a book a book might you might be doing i don't have it yet but we'll come up with something about that in fact um max and kira may be able to work on that again we're trying to get this information out before i go right. uh, um so um if we are unable to recommend something to you now, pick something up, and then we can talk about it as pilgrims in the fall if you found it good, and we'll definitely have, an, you know, read this as a group when we get in the fall. I saw another question. Yeah, um, are there going to be children on this? Let's say you, do you have a recommended minimum age? Not so much for me, but... Yeah, I would need to check with EOD about that. I mean, I know that Heather went with EOD's company when she was 16. My guess is, is that it's probably, you know, They've got to be old enough to walk 20, 20, 20 minutes, get used to that, that, that uh, travel time. Um, we'll see what kind of um, request there is for that. But I would say probably teenagers, um, but I, I don't know. I don't, I, that's a good question. I would need to find a more formal answer for me, Doug. It's during school, so it would be hard for most kids to good point. take off. Yeah. I will say that uh, I, we, we are lucky that the April time is a lovely time for weather in the Holy Land. That was my question, actually. Yeah. How hot? Yeah, and that's <laughs> a, once you register, that will be yeah. given to you. But it is, it is actually 60s, 70s in the day and a little cooler at night. Um, it does get very hot in the summer, but this is a very idealized time to be going. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Should we share the trip with our friends, or do you just want... No, I would say here's the thing. So uh, we, we are open to all. We certainly want to make sure we get to at least that 22, and I believe we'll get there. Um, and hey, you know what? I mean, as a very, very outsider chance, and if we have 60 people interested, maybe we could look at getting an, another date in that spring. Although, you know, I want you to consider this one first. Yeah. But I would say right now we, we need people. And so uh, there, I have not thought about, you know, staggering registration. If anyone's interested, please sh spread the word and invite them to, to register. So if you are of St. Mary's, get your deposit in sooner rather than later. Yes? Um, I know this question will get asked. And ask it loudly. It occurs to me in the finances. It says, mail and deliver the $750 check. Since most people at this point are hybriding their expenses through credit cards, are we discouraging that? Uh, great. No, so you can certainly make your deposit via our website. 
Um, we just ask that you would be kind enough to add the, uh, the fees that are required of us to, to, um, to, to work that payment. So you can go on our website, uh, find one-time payment, put in the memo line, pilgrimage, and that will function in the exact same way. All right. Oh, yes. The passport requirement of having for six months. Mm -hmm. I was just curious because most passport requirements I've seen is that it can't expire um, less than six months. Correct. This is different. They, 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 they want to make sure that this was not a last. This is an, this is an Israeli uh, requirement. So it has to be at least six months old. Only of starting from the beginning. It has to be said six months old. So you need it has to be, it has to be active for at least six months before your trip. So it's just from the beginning, where it's usually like she just said. Correct. This is different, but yeah. I would I would also follow that rule as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Barbara, was that a question? No, I was just curious with everything going on. Are they offering trips now? They are not offering trips now. Okay. The hope is is that you know, and again, this is why it's hopeful. Yeah. And um, we have time to discern and reflect. So. But I would rather us explore than, than I'd rather us be hopeful than, than pessimistic. And we'll see what happens. Yeah. And the travel insurance information we'll discuss when we get back in September. Well, our hope is, is that to get a critical mass of who's going, and then Max will do some research about is that, should we do it as individuals? Should we do it as a group? Like, what are the options there? To get the 750 back. Or just the travel insurance that may, may you know, it, there's probably very little difference between covering that little amount or the full amount. Yeah. Um, I, I'll, I well, most like to suggest that we cover the full amount, um, but yeah, we'll just we'll explore and discover those and choose those in the fall. When you come back, mm -hmm. the critical thing with that always is what are the circumstances under which the insurance will pay. Right, that's, exactly. That's, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, critical thing. Let's yeah. Yeah, make sure you understand. That's the gist. Well, but we'll yeah. discuss that. But you'll research that mm -hmm. in the fall. So and I highly encourage you, know. if you are interested in going on the trip, is to get your deposit in sooner rather than later, simply to hold your space. And talk to people about it, because this yeah. is a, a really a tremendous experience. Uh, any other pressing questions that might be good for our group and the group at home? So I think I'm right that if you do send your 750 in now, and then you can't go, mm -hmm. you can just get that back. That money is being held at St. Mary's. Yeah, so it, yes. it's not a big risk, and we don't need travel insurance right now for that. Correct. Yeah. At, Right. So right. at least until yep. January 14th. There is zero risk at your deposit right now. Right. Yeah. Zero That's risk. We will hold it in trust and make a decision then, and you can get it back at any time. All right. Well, thank you all. I'm really excited about this opportunity for you at home. Please reach out to Max, ask your questions, send in your deposit. We're going to have a lovely, holy time. Thank you. I'm going to stop this.